In today's tutorial, you're gonna learn how to make the low poly look in Cinema 4D. Stay tuned. here from Grayscale Gorilla, giving you the tools, training, and tutorials to help you become a better motion designer. Now today, it's one of our most requested tutorials we ever get here at Grayscale Gorilla, but before we get to that, I wanted to make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We have a ton of videos coming out and we think you're gonna love them. Also, if you haven't seen our intro to Cinema 4D series, please head on over to our website, check it out. It's completely free and I'll link it up down in the description below. All right, let's get into today's tutorial. It's all about creating that low poly look in Cinema 4D. This has been a really popular look over the years. And like I said, so many people ask us for this technique. We made this video just for you. So if you've ever wanted to make that look, stay tuned. Let's get into it right now. The first thing to try, and uh, you know, if you have a model or a sphere, this works with whatever you're uh, trying out, uh, is to play with the Fong tag. Now the Fong tag is here to actually uh, round out the the image you have. So everything's busted into uh, polygons in 3D and this Fong tag says, okay, don't display it as all these little squares like we have. Instead, try to round it off when you can. So when we render, it looks round. Well, if we just delete that tag, we can actually hit render and now we can see all the little facets if we zoom in, all the little facets and all the little um, uh, squares and all the polygons uh, as they are without the rounding. So this goes a long way in just getting into that mode. So Fong tag is your enemy when it comes to this uh, when it comes to this low poly kind of technique. So we have this pig here, and this is part of the uh, free model pack. Uh, you could get this at, at GSG. Search free model pack, and uh, this pig here, uh, Rob made it by the way. So this pig here uh, has hypernerves on it, so we can also turn off the hypernerves. So tr remove, you know, step one, try removing the fong. Step two, remove anything that's adding geometry. So let's turn off the hypernerves, and now we got this super low poly. This is kind of like how the original pig was modeled. So we got this nice little mo low poly model here of a pig. We hit render, and we got uh, all the little low poly stuff. So in this technique, in this case, that's really all we needed to do to make this dude look low poly. Now there um, are other techniques, so let's look at... Um, some other ways to kind of approach this. Let's make a new file here, and I'm going to add a sphere. And a sphere, uh, also, the other thing to keep, uh, if you're playing with low poly, you may want to come in here to your display mode and turn on lines. You can turn on shading plus lines, and this way you're going to see all of the geometry um, in, in your scene. So what's step one? Turn off the Fong tag. Boom. And again, now when we render, it's going to render perfect. And why is that? We have this render perfect uh, checkbox turned on here. Let's turn that off, hit render again, and now we're starting to see this low poly sphere deal. All right, so what can we do from here? Well, we can turn up the segments, turn down the segments, and we can also try other ways of building the sphere. So now we have triangles. Now, I like this mode because when we start to make this lower poly, we're going to end up with more of these triangles instead of squares. And to me, this is part of the look. If you look at all those uh, images, beautiful images people are posting up, uh, a lot of them are built out of these kind of oddly shaped triangles. So starting with triangles is going to get us kind of partly way there. So let me show you the way that I've been approaching this. And this is using a displacer, first of all. So drop, uh, uh, add a displacer uh, modifier and drop it onto your sphere. And in your, um, in your shading tab, you want to pick noise. And what this is going to do is it's going to modify the uh, polygons and the points using this noise. So it's going to make it not a sphere, it's going to kind of pop it out. Now what this does is it gives it a little bit of randomness. So already we're looking a little bit more like this style. It's not a perfect, you know, perfect representation. It's kind of a, almost like if you were to fold this out of paper, it wouldn't be perfect, right? So that's another thing to play with when you're looking into this technique is making it a little bit imperfect, a little bit like paper, you know, nothing's a perfect 90 degrees and angle. So a little bit of displacement goes a long way. And then uh, there's also this wonderful little tag here, or this effector called um, a polygon reduction. Uh, so I, I should call these deformers. These aren't effectors. These little purple, uh, purpley blue things. These are uh, uh, deformers. So let's grab the polygon reduction deformer and drop it also as a child. And you can see now it's removing polygons on the fly based on this percentage. So you can play with this, and you've may maybe seen me play with this in other tutorials. But on the fly, it's just gonna start removing um, points. And this is nice because now we have that kind of 
again, organic, you know, folded, not perfect look. So let's render that. And now we're, we're getting a lot closer, at least to me, this is um, similar in style to what you're seeing. Now, if you've seen, uh, I'm gonna try to link some portfolios and stuff with uh, people that do this. Um, and if you've seen this stuff, you know, they build mountains and they build little landscapes or sometimes they're just abstract shapes like this. The, the actually building of the mountains and the, and the, and the, um, the, uh, the scenery itself is probably more traditional than it is building it, you know, from, from low poly shapes to begin with. So in other words, if you want a mountain, you know, grab a, grab a uh, landscape object and then try these techniques on it. So let's grab the landscape object and let's just copy and paste our displacer and our polygon reduction right onto it. And let's turn off the fong tag and uh, let's remove more polygons. So there we go. Let's hit render and boom, there you go. So, you know, think of your models as just modeling the scene and then apply these techniques at the end, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think that's how it's done. I don't know how all these, all these artists are doing all these low poly things. I just thought it was kind of cool and we're gonna, I hopped in and, and tried playing around with some of these techniques. So uh, try, you know, try the displacer and the polygon reduction. And there's one more I wanted to show you before we, you know, go in and build our own little scene here. And this is something Chris uh, told me. And uh, you grab a sphere and again, we're back at our perfect sphere here and you add a connect object. Connect object is, I guess it's always, uh, over the last year, it's been more and more the, the plugin I go to or the object I go to to solve problems. And every time I ask, how do you do this? Connect object seems to always pop up as one of those things that works. So check this out. Connect object has this well turned on. And by default, it's set very low. So it's basically connecting the object together. This works if you have multiple objects, it's connecting them together. Um, and in this case, our tolerance isn't doing anything. But if we start to raise our tolerance, check out what's going on. It's starting to reduce our polygons. So it's starting to weld points and um, uh, vertices together as you turn this up. So as we go up and up, we get these really cool shapes, really weird shapes. And if we hit render, well, we have this blobby sphere thing again. And that is because unlike the other objects that have a fong tag attached to them, so if we grab a sphere, the sphere has a fong tag right here we could delete. The connect object doesn't have that and our sphere down here doesn't have it either. So how do we get rid of that rounding? Well, in the connect object itself, it has a fong mode built in. And as breaks is doing you know what most people want it to do is round that stuff out but we don't want it we want manual right as soon as we set it to manual it's going to be off basically and we have our little polygons back so this is pretty cool and you can combine these effects so let's say you like that but you want more displacement well we could bring this in and add our displacer and drop that under our sphere and go to shading and add some noise and turn up the displacement and now we get totally cool shapes right so Pretty cool. And I wanted to go over one more thing, which is in some of the examples I have, I have one that's kind of a symmetry. And the only th thing I added to to do that was who to thunk it, a symmetry object. So drop the whole thing in a symmetry. And now you could tell it to uh, be a symmetry uh, uh, X, Y. And then if you move your original object over, it's going to be a mirrored image. So that's how I got that kind of low poly symmetry thing was just dropping it in there and making a mirror image of it. And there we go. Okay, so actually let's take this and start to light it and do some of the other techniques. Because um, another part of this technique that I've been seeing a lot is really interesting colors and and various colors on all these faces. So uh, when I posted some examples while I was playing around with this, people asked, you know, how do you get different colors on all these faces? Well, here's a couple other techniques I came across that seem to work okay. So let's grab our texture, drop it on our connect object, uh, let's actually just drop it on the symmetry object. And the difference is if we drop it on the connect object, then the text, the textures themselves will be symmetry. If we drop it on this symmetry, then the whole thing will become one object basically. Uh, so now we can go in here and we have this giant uh, texture window. Let's make a full screen like an idiot. All right, here we go. So we can go in and we can add um, a gradient. So go to gradient and uh, in your color channel, go into your gradient and just pick two kind of like crazy colors. You know which two colors I'm gonna pick. Boom, all right, so now we can uh, close that and check out what we have. We have our gradient 
going through this object. Now, without all this stuff on it, let's just drop it directly on a sphere and turn off the displacement. And already you can see it's not behaving the way a gradient would. And that's because of the way that the sphere is uh, set to this mode. It's, we're not getting a perfect gradient, which means when you set this gradient mode and you start to play with it, you're not getting just a pure gradient across it. You're getting almost, almost this random look. So check that out. Now we have different colors on different shapes. And in fact, if we come in here and we add more colors to our gradient, let's, let's add a blue here, like a faded blue, come back, and now it's actually going through all three colors. And maybe a little bit more, too much on the blue, uh, but we can, again, we can adjust that. Let me shrink this window down, and we don't need a giant material editor anymore. Let's go into gradient, basically make more stuff orange and more stuff pink, less stuff blue. We can move this around. And then when we come back, it's going to adjust it. Boom. More pink, more blue, less orange. So play around with that. Play around with the colors and uh, kind of dial in what you want. You can also try playing with the gradient type. So uh, having it go vertically instead of horizontally will give you different types. Uh, and again, mapping also makes a big difference. So if you want to do some sort of mapping, cubic mapping, and then shrink your tiles, you can get some really cool effects going on. So, uh, you know, this, this technique to me, it's all about experimenting with it. I'm just trying to give you a couple things to play with. Gradients help a lot. Fresnel also works um, in this, uh, in this uh, technique as well. I said as well a bunch. All right, so here we go. What do we do from here? Well, that looks pretty cool. Uh, let's get some lighting and maybe a background object. So for my background object, I'm going to grab the... Bu -bu 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 -bu. My icons are huge. I'm going to shrink that down. I'm going to grab the HDRI Studio. And uh, the HDRI Studio Pack has a seamless floor, which is basically not useful for the floor. We just want it as a gradient. And uh, by default, it's going to be white in the background. Uh, I'm just going to darken this up and make it kind of a darkish grayish blue and a black. So now we just have this nice little highlight here in the back. It just gives it a little bit of color. And I'm going to add some turbulence to the background, and that's going to give it a little bit of haze here. But our object is just too bright. There's basically no lights in the scene, or I should say there's a default light in the scene. We need a little bit more... Uh, maybe a uh, shadowing going on. So uh, there's a couple things we could do. We could start playing around with lighting, of course. We could also just add ambient occlusion and really crank it. Try to get all these little details um, darker. You see the difference. You, now in these little holes here, it's getting darker and darker. We can even add more contrast in the ambient occlusion, let's say to 20%. And that's going to really darken up those inside parts. Um, and this is actually this is looking pretty good. One other thing you could do is add more of a directional light, something like a soft box. Let me grab uh, my Light Kit Pro here and bring in an overhead soft box and hit render and see what we got now. So you can see it does take a little bit longer to render, um, and that's because we got some nice lighting coming from ahead, uh, up, up overhead here. And let's add a camera and kind of zoom out and adjust our light. You can see our soft box is there, but it's a little too high. Let's bring it in just so we can get really close. Let's get our camera closer, and we're getting there. So now what we're gonna do is turn up that softbox. We can also add a little bit more um, as far as uh, the fall off. So we're just gonna make this go a little bit further, add a little bit more light in our scene, and now we're getting to something a little bit more dynamic with some overhead lighting plus ambient occlusion. It's looking pretty cool. And the last thing we could do is add some sort of reflection um, to this object here. Bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Uh, we do the normal stuff here. Just add a Fresnel and, and add some reflection. I think this might be a little too blingy for me. It's a little too like futuristic blingy. My favorite part about this technique is actually the color. Or, or the paper look of it. And we kind of removed our away from that. So let's just turn off reflection and let's remove the overhead softbox as well. I think in this certain specific case, I'm okay with it right here. Um, and in fact, there's uh, kind of a minimal amount of lighting or what I should say, it's more of a global lighting. This is more of a case of like where you need a skylight or something like that. So let's grab the linear skylight and that's going to be more like it. So Here's our linear skylight, just giving an overall kind of glow to it. And we could go down here and turn off the scene by camera so we could have our backdrop still visible. And uh, maybe we turn this up as well, just to make it a little bit brighter. 
Hit render and see what we get. Hey, that's not so bad. Um, so play around with it. It's it's really fun to just grab some of these shapes. And in fact, you know, if you want to add something like, let's grab a torus and move it in the what y direction? I guess it'd be x direction. There it is. Let's say we want this whole thing surrounded by this giant torus. Beautiful. Uh, we could do the same texture on here. And what's really cool is if you have a nice look that is working on one object, you can actually just grab it um, and kind of copy and paste it with the torus. So now instead of the sphere, let's bring the torus in here, turn off the sphere, and also uh, copy and paste the displacement onto the torus. And we have the same effect on our torus. One thing to keep in mind is our torus has a couple things different that our original sphere didn't have, which is the gradient is mapping perfectly, which you may or may not want. The other thing to keep in mind is because there's less geometry, it's a much larger shape. So you can go into your torus and play with your original geometry. So I'm adding more segments here. I'm adding more stuff to the outside. This had, that, that might be cool just to animate that. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, it's a little too uh, round as well. So maybe we'll make this a little bit more like that and there we go uh, so let's see uh, that flat light I think with the specular was actually helping a lot more so there you go um, real fast real fun technique to play with and uh, again we don't really have an end goal here a lot of that stuff is abstract uh, but look at the stuff that you like in the in online that uh, is that's low poly mode and now you have some tools at least to play around and uh, and get to that final result so uh, uh, I think that's it. All right, thanks again everybody for watching that one. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check out our Intro to Cinema 4D series. I'm gonna link it up again here and down in the description. We hope to see you there. All right, we have a ton more tutorials here on YouTube. We hope to see you in another one right now. Go ahead, click on it right on the sidebar. All right, thanks again for watching. Bye everybody. Low polygon, low polygon, low polygon. Yo poly, yo poly, low poly, low poly.